Hello and welcome back to another episode of World Traveler Cooking. Today we're going to make Piraga Stragistas, or Lithuanian friendship cake. This is a cake usually served with tea, and it's named that, I think, because, at least from what I've heard, sort of a good way to make friends is eat cake and drink tea. So, <clears throat> this is a relatively interestingly Lithuanian cake, but I've made one important substitution because here I can't get Lithuanian farmer's cheese and I haven't had the time to make it this time. So, um, I'm going to substitute ricotta and I'll explain why in a moment. Um, it may not be a perfect substitute, I'm sure it's not, but it should have similar cooking um, characteristics. <clears throat> um, so, at any rate, our ingredients for the dough are 165 grams of butter, an egg, 75 grams of sugar. I'm going to use one and a half to two tablespoons of sour cream. Um, I have 300 grams of flour and one teaspoon of baking powder, and that's the dough. The filling will be about 200 grams, or most of this, um, tin, uh, container of ricotta cheese. It should be a farmer's cheese, but thing is, Lithuanian farmer's cheese is basically a acid-curdled um, cheese, similar in construction to paneer, although, usually, though often Lithuanians also add egg to this cheese. <clears throat> I will probably do a special one of that type in a relatively... Uh, future um, uh, time, but ricotta cheese is made in a kind of similar way, and so it ought to have similar cooking properties. Um, acid curdled cheeses usually don't melt in the same way that, um, say, rennet curdled, curdled cheeses do. So this is why I'm using ricotta cheese. Um, if it isn't quite right, well, oh well. Um, <clears throat> I have four tablespoons of sugar, and I have a teaspoon of vanilla sugar. I have two eggs, although one of these egg yolks will be used to brush the top, and I'm going to use about half of this jar of jam, about 100 grams. Um, you can use whatever kind of jam you like. I'm going to use blueberry, that's usually what I've heard used in this case. So that's what uh, we're going to use today. Um, we want to make sure our butter, butter is beginning to soften a bit. It shouldn't be, yeah, this is good. It shouldn't be completely soft, but it shouldn't be like um, right out of the fridge either. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and we'll use the stand mixer today to get the dough going. I might use the stand mixer for the filling too. We'll see. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, so appear to have uh, lost the last part, but. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just creaming the butter and sugar together. Um, we'll do this until we have a nice creamy mixture. Um, here I like to start with my butter just a little cold and whip the butter by itself before adding the sugar, which I've already done. Um, but that's just because I'm in the tropics in a more temperate area, maybe bring the butter up to room temperature and just work with it there. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, now <clears throat> we will add one egg and we will continue to whip it for quite a while. And with larger grain sugar like this, uh, probably it's now that the sugar will fully dissolve. So let's be generous with how long we whip it. And I will scrape the, the, the sides a few times in, in this process. I'll be back in a few min minutes when I have this nicely incorporated. And eventually this just looks like a butter-sugar mixture again, which is kind of what we want. Next we will add our sour cream and continue mixing. So in has gone our sour cream. Now let's go ahead and mix this until it's perfectly mixed. This will be a few more minutes and then I'll be back. Now at this point basically it looks like um, again, a mixture of butter and sugar. So I'm just going to start spooning in the flour and baking soda. 
A bit at a time, let it incorporate. Add a bit more. And at some point this may become too thick for the mixer, in which case I will just mix it by hand at that point. So I'm just adding the sugar slow, no sorry, the flour slowly here. Letting it incorporate. At some point it's likely to get too um, thick for the mixer. And in that case, we'll just start mixing it by hand. And in between rounds, uh, I'm often going to check and make sure that it's all getting mixed properly. So in this bowl I've put my 200 grams of ricotta cheese um, and I'm going to separate the eggs. Um, the reason for separating the eggs is we're going to whip the egg whites um, and one of the yolks will end up in here, the other yolk will end up um, being used to um, glaze the top. All right, so here we are. I'm gonna set this yolk aside and then we will be back later to use it. So, egg yolk, the sugar, the vanilla sugar, the ricotta cheese, um, or other cheese curd, and now we're just going to whip these together until they are all fully incorporated and nice and mixed well. So this will be a few minutes and I'll be back. Then we'll get the egg whites done and we'll fold the mixture together. So, to fold in, we pour this up on top. That's the wrong tool. Be right back with the right tool. And then we just sort of gently stir it in, lifting from the bottom and folding over the top. And once everything is well incorporated, then we will consider this to be folded in. This will add a bit of air to the filling. Yeah, you can see it makes the cre it makes the filling quite a bit lighter. Um, so at this point, I think we're ready to start working on it. So I'm going to start <clears throat> by roughly determining where I need to have this, and then I'm going to take my dough, which from its time in the freezer is now a lot more solid. I'm going to knead it gently so that it's a more even consistency and I'm going to break it into two balls, one of which should be about twice as big as the other. Okay, The small ball is going to be the top and the big ball will be the bottom. And then I'm going to put this one on here. I can flour the board if I need to and I'm going to roll it out to roughly the proportions of my pan. Alright, so that's been done. Now we can spoon in the filling and I think I'm just going to let this mound up on top because I think when I put the cap on it's just going to push it out to the side so so we're just going to do that You can see it's kind of spreading out already. And move this aside. But again, note about how big it is. And then we'll roll our cap. So we will take our remaining um, egg yolk and we will paint the top of this cake. 
and this will give it a nice golden color. Seems like I didn't need the whole egg yolk, but I'm going to make sure that I really get everything here, because why not? And then, if you like, you can take a fork and you can carve little patterns in the top, which I'm going to do now. So, normally I've seen this cut into squares, so I think that's what I'm going to do. This looks very much like it does in, in at least some of the pictures I've seen. So that's um, promising. I'm going to put these on, um, I'm going to get a couple photos and then I will be back for a taste test. So now for the taste test. So this looks to me kind of like a Lithuanian cheesecake, if you will. I'm trying the cheese filling that exactly matches the description. So now let's go ahead and try this full piece of it. It's definitely on. It's definitely a quite a sweet cake. Um, the jam, the filling, and the cake all have quite a bit of sugar in it. Um, as a small dessert, it's actually very pleasant, um, creamy, um, rich, those would probably be the adjectives I use to describe it. The base is firm, sort of more like a pastry than a cake. Um, And the filling is, is, is quite soft. It's very nice. The jam provides um, a hint of fruitiness. It's not over the top, but you can definitely taste the fruit. All in all, the combination is very nice. I like it very much. Now, if you find this content interesting, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, if you have something to say about this video, and make a dish like this a little differently, or just anything else, feel free to say so uh, in the comments below. Um, I very much appreciate all kinds of comments, and you can go back and see on some of my uh, past videos where people have disagreed with the made way I've made a dish, and sometimes those conversations can be very, very productive. So. Don't hesitate to disagree with me on anything. Um, at any rate, recipes in the description. Bon appetit, and see you next week.